Okay, so this is the length lecture. We're on homotopy and Cauchy's theorem. Okay, so today's topic, we're gonna introduce the notion of homotopy, convex sets, and star convex sets. And we're gonna perform a new version of Cauchy's theorem and we're gonna define what is a simple connected set. And we'll see. Okay, it is very geometric. So at first, let's start with an example. So, first start with the place where Cauchy theorem always holds. We know that the Cauchy theorem always holds in a disk, right? So in a disk, any closed rectifiable curve, its line integral is equal to zero, right? So here, let's suppose we're given a path gamma, right? And for each point, say this is gamma s, right? And this is a, this is the center of the circle. So between gamma s and a, we can make a line, right, that connects them. And for each point on the line, we can pair it, like, I mean, we can represent it in a parametric form, right? For each gamma s, each z can be um, related in this, right? So ta and 1 minus e gamma s. And for each point of z, and so for this, we could just define a new function gamma Ts to be Ta plus 1 minus T gamma S. Okay? So if T is fixed, if T is fixed and S is moving, right? So if S moves here, we do again for the same T, right? So for this, we see that gamma 0 is equal to gamma and gamma 1 is equal to A. And there's no hole in the circle, right? So we can transform from gamma zero to gamma to a, right? So we can we can like we can make this, and then we can say something like um, just an example. I'll try to copy this. So. I make it smaller, right? We can go smaller, 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 right? Eventually, it will transfer to gamma one with no problem because there's no hole in the circle, right? There's no problematic point in this region, right? So we really wanted to find them, like what are such region are called in mathematics. But before that, let's just discover some properties about these curves, right? So here it gives a definition which is that for gamma zero, gamma one, closed rectifiable curve in the region, we say gamma zero is homotopic to gamma one, denoted as this, if there exists a gamma function that is defined on the unit square to G, it is continuous such that these two conditions are satisfied. Right? So from here, you can see that the S represents the input of each um, curve and t so the, the input t here represents i mean represents like which curve you are which right which curve you are because we're transforming some sense of transforming right to from gamma zero to gamma one and also it is so for any t right this means that for any t, gamma t is closed, right? Because it's input at 0 and input at 1 for any t curve, right? For any t, it's a closed curve. So this characterized, like, what we mean by we transform it, we, we shrink it, shrink it, shrink it, like, all the way to 0, right? So, yeah, if we define gamma t as this, each gamma t is a closed curve. And a family of closed curves from gamma zero to gamma one. Okay? So I hope you can digest the def definition. Right? Okay. And just some note, right? Just some to the best way to digest is to prove the following fact that homotopy is a equivalence relation. Okay, let's just get some practice. So gamma zero is homotopic to itself. 
Well, let's just define a function to be gamma st equal to gamma not s for any st. So for any t, it's still equal to this. Okay. So no matter what t is picked, it's only depend on the input s. And here we just show that well, it has the desired value, definitely. And we want to show that gamma is continuous. Well, first we use the fact that gamma zero is continuous, right? We use the fact that gamma zero is continuous. So when they're less than gamma, and when, when their distance is less than delta, this is less than delta, which means that this is equal to this, which is less than epsilon, okay? Because it's independent of the choice of T1. It's only, it only maps to S0 and S1, right? And it's, tr uh, it's reflexive. If gamma 0 is homotopic to gamma 1, the gamma 1 homotopic to gamma 0. Okay, so if this, we let this gamma be continuous be given, and we define another function. Define so we the s remains unchanged, but the t is defined like this. So then, so to understand this, right, the s doesn't matter, but t. Remember, gamma is from gamma zero to gamma one, right? But t is now as t increases, this decreases. So this is kind of from gamma 1 to gamma 0, right? So this is the key idea. And it turns out that this is true, right? It has the desired value. And it is a closed curve. Gamma 0t is gamma 1t for any t. And it is continuous. So for this, right? Their distance is just the same as this distance because when you're subtracting these two components, the y, the one will be canceled out. So it's, it is the same. And, right, because they're the same. So the epsilon argument, epsilon delta argument remains unchanged. And the hardest part is to show that the transitivity. So gamma zero is homotopic to gamma one, gamma one homotopic to gamma two, then gamma zero is homotopic to gamma two. Well, we just start from these two functions to given. Now we define another function so that uh, we have this definition. So st is s2t from t from 1 to 1 over 2. And beyond that point, it is s and 2t minus 1. Okay, so for here, notice that gamma s1 over 2 is well defined because d2 values are the same. Okay, at t equals to 1 over 2. And first, we want to show that it is continuous. So we just break it into different cases. For them being this set, well, from here, we can use the continuity of gamma, right? It's continuous on this, and they are in this set. It's continuous on this set, but this is on this set. This is a subset. It's a proper subset. So... We can just use the continuity, we can use that blah blah blah, such that this is just delta. So if we have this, then we have this, right? Because the, com the coordinates, right? Like this is obviously greater than this one. So if this is less than delta, then of course we have this less than delta, then we have this less than epsilon. So we have this is less than epsilon. Now for other region, right, which is by symmetry, we use the continuity of the other function. I think this is gamma or lambda. I don't know. Let me search it up. Yeah, it's lambda. It is lambda. Okay? So. Yeah, it, it is called lambda. And for <coughs> when they're on this set, when t naught is exactly to 1 over 2. Now, this gets a bit more analytic, right? For any epsilon, of delta 1, delta 2 for gamma and lambda. And that makes them to be continuous at this point and this point. Right? Right? 
So now we let delta be the minimum of delta 1, delta 2. So if we have this is true. So here, the, it depends on the value of t, right? If t is less than 1 over 2, we have this is less than epsilon. And if t is greater than 1 over 2, we have this is less than epsilon. But, right? But by our choice of delta, we have this is true. So eventually, no matter what, no matter what t is given, because t obviously not equal to 1 over 2, right? We're, we're talking about limit here. So gamma is continuous at this, okay? Because it is continuous because they are continuous. Okay? Now, to verify its value, it's a simple task. So I just skip it. So here it leads to the definition of a convex set. The convex set is that for any two sets, the line adjoining in V are in set. So obviously the disk is convex, right? Because for any two points, connect this, connect this, and you connect two of them, right? Right, you, you see that all oh, they are convex. And S star shaped or star convex, if there exists a point such that for any point A, Z is in G. So why we call this star convex? Because you have given the star, then there's star convex at this point. Because from here, we have a connect. Yeah, we can connect here, we can connect here, we can connect here, 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 we can connect them. But given our star shape, if we have this point, then this fails to be connect, uh, to be line the set, right? So it's called star convex. So obviously convex is our con star convex because if you're convex, then you're star convex at every point. And star convexes are connected, right? Because this, we have this is true. So this is in G, so they're path connected. For any Z, W, and G, there is a there is a triangular path, right, connecting them. But a triangular path is a continu is an image of continuous function, right? So it is path connected, so it's connected. Alright, so we know that um gamma one is closed. Okay. I'm trolling. Uh the proposition is that for any open set is star shaped. If gamma naught is the curve is constantly equal to a so if gamma naught is the curve a right is a star shaped and gamma naught is equal to a that every closed curve is homotopic to gamma zero gamma naught so so digest a statement we're gonna give a quick proof so gamma one is continuous rectifiable in G, right? First we put gamma as T to be this. Okay? Because G is star shaped. So this is NG for any ST. Right? First we have this is NG. And we have this definition, the T. We know that T is A star shaped, so it is in G for any ST. And we have the desired values. It's really quick, easy to check. We just want to check that gamma is continuous. So since we can estimate, we want to estimate this difference. Well, this difference is equal to, right? We just break it up into this. And from here, we subtract and plus T gamma 1 as naught. Okay, so from here we can do some factoring. We can factor gamma 1 as not here and we can factor t here. Okay, so notice there are common terms, so we combine them and plus this term. And now we see that t, t is in 0 and 1, right? So it's less than or equal to 1, right? And here. The thing is that from here, we can use the continuity of gamma 1. From here, we can, we, 
because we as t goes to t naught, right? So this gets small. I mean, gets small, and these two are constant terms, right? So this gives the estimation really good. So as gamma one is continuous. So for any epsilon, we can take a delta prime such that it makes them to be continuous. I mean, to be small. We take delta to be the minimum of this and this. So we really just want to make this thing to be less than epsilon over 2. So we make it this choice, right? It's to be canceling out. Then, if st is non Latino less than delta, from here, we know that this is true, which gives this. And this is true, which gives this, right? Which gives them less than epsilon, right? So the estimation is really an artwork here, right? You see, you see we, we can still like manipulating two variables at the same time when two variables are approaching, when a court like, when two points in a plane are approaching to each other, we can analyze each variable at the same time by taking a delta to be uniformly small, and we have these estimation and gives their less than epsilon, right? So this this part gets really analytic, right? So we often encounter when one curve is homotopic to a constant curve. So we call such curves homotopic to zero, okay? Homotopic to zero. So now we have a theorem 6.7, okay? 6.7 says that if gamma naught and gamma one are two vertical curves such that they're homotopic, homotopic, then their integral are the same for any analytic f on G, okay? So this is what we want to prove. If they're homotopic, then they have the same integral. Provided the the function integrating is analytic. Okay. So the proof. First, we let uh, gamma be given from or 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 unit square. Right. Is compact. No. Because G is open, this is close. <laughs> okay, so there is a typo here. Should be what? C minus G, right? So a close set and a compact set, then their distance is positive. We let R denote the distance. And <clears throat> we know that there exists a natural number such that we can make this small right so this is like the, the delta we're doing because it is be given so it is continuous right so we can estimate like with, with this r now we define zjk to be lambda at point j and kn okay so j j k are natural numbers, right? At point J M K N. And J J K is is the the little square, so here. Right? So this is J N K N and this plus one over N is J plus one over N, right? And this one over N is K plus one over N. So this is the this is J K J J K. Okay, also like the diameter, right? The diameter is root two over n. So, for any w in the set, for any w in the point, we have this is less than this, right? Because the longest distance is the diagonal, right? So we have this is true, which is less than four n squared. Right, which means that for any w, we have this is less than four n squared, which means we have this. So for any point, it is, right. So s prime p prime is this point, right. So it is always in the r radius of 
ZJK. <laughs> right? Now, if we pick PJK to be this path, okay? So it's, it's kind of abstract, like, what is this? So it's from here, 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 right? So we start from here, and when you go one cycle, this is PJK, right? You just look at their index, indices. But the disks are convex, so we have, it is in a circle. Okay. I mean, um, this is, yeah. So, like, this is just a path. It lies in the disk, right? So, the Cauchy on the disk, it gives that the integral, the integral on this path should be zero because you're closed, rectifiable, you're piecewise smooth in a circle. Right, so the integral should be zero. It's proven last lecture, right? So we just let QK to be Z. So what is Z? Z is the, the output at gamma at this point. So let QK be this path. It's a closed polygon, right? Because Z zero T is equal to, I mean, gamma zero T is equal to gamma one T. So here we want to show that this is true. Gamma zero f, gamma q zero, q one, blah blah blah, q n equal to gamma one. We do one equality each time, okay? So we do this equality, right? So now, if we define sigma j to be gamma zero from j to j plus one, okay? As you can see here, then sigma j plus this path. This straight line, well, it's really just this straight line, it is a closed rectifiable curve. Why is it closed? Because sigma j goes from, right, if you just observe, right, goes from here to here. And this goes from here to here. So it is, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like um, you have, right, it's something like this. <laughs> So, sigma j lies in a disk. This is what we want to show. If we can show this, then we can argue that their integral is equal to zero. So, it lies in a disk. Well, we already know this lies in a disk. But, right, which each path is in the disk, of this disk, right? So, because <coughs> our pjk is defined as this, where each of these two points, they are in this circle, but circle is convex, right? So this is a subset of the circle. We have this. And to show that sigma j lies in a circle, well, the image of sigma j is really just gamma naught, right? Which is this. This is in j, j, k, right? This set is a subset of this. Well, it's in here, so. So it shows that we have this is equal to negative this, which is if we swap them, right? Gives you this. We remove the negative thing. And we sum up with respect to j. So we get gamma naught f, right? Because sigma j is really just, is really just, right? So this is like sigma j, right? So if you sum them all up, right? If you sum them all up, like something like that, right? We were getting gamma naught, and from here we connect it, we see that it's Q naught. So, because the definition of Q is this, right? So, we get this similarly, we have this. So, finally, we have to show this is true, right? This is what we want to show finally, right? So, first, we use the fact that. The integral along along this is zero. <laughs> so zero is equal to this because each of them is zero, so does your sign. Right? So we recall the definition of P. The integral over this is negative of integral over this. Right? We swap them. 
and it's part of pj plus 1k so here right we can see so here 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 right we go here 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 and from this one we go here 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 so these term cancels out right so a more detailed calculation is performed here okay the same colors are like negations the same colors blah 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 blah, blah right and these two cancels out this cancel with some previous one this cancel with some next one all the way like down 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 right and notice that these two are equal right since z not k is equal to z and k because for each fixed the curve is closed, right? So we have this is true, right? They, we can swap them because for every k, n and zero are the same, right? So this is equal to you can just swap them, which shows this. So now what's left is that the integral from here and integral from here, right? From here to here, from here to here, and from here to here. Because here to here are all canceled. It cancels out from here to here, right? So eventually just these, these, and these. Because those, those, are cancels out are canceled out right they're canceled out because they're they're like see you can swap them right so the sum so for this thing if we take a sum right it's just integral over right from zero to one from one to two so zero one one to two until 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 here right c and k well this is q k and subtract right because if we because if we swap it swap it zero one one two two three three four and minus two and minus one right so we have the negative sign here from here to here, right? So it should be in, right? It's just this over this, but this over this gives you zero, right? So these two are equal, so as desired. We have proved the theorem. Okay, so, so we just proved that for two homotopic curve, you have their integral are the same okay so one thing i think it is lack of explanation is that um is okay it's in the disc right so we know this is in the disc right jk okay so there's a typo here um, J0, right? J0. So it was in BRJ0. And this is subset of G, right? Because this R is the distance of the distance of what? Right? distance of squared and this right so why this why is this because we can just see well if if say y is not in g right if y is not in g right 
Now, pick, pick an element Z from ZJ naught, the width radius R, right? The distance between Y and Z is squared equal to R, which is the femum of, right, which is the, the distance of those. Okay. So we actually need, so we actually need the R, right? We actually need the R. So we, we, we have the R because they're close and compact. This is compact because its input is compact and the function is, I mean, it's uniformly continuous and it's continuous, right? So that gives the result, right? R, right? It means that Y is not in B, R, J not. Right? If Z is equal to Z J naught. Right. Actually, this is kind of stupid. We could just pick. We could just. We could just do this at the very beginning. Right? So we can just say. Z J naught. So it's not in the radius. It's not in the. It's not in the ball. Right? Because their distance their distance is greater than to R. But R is the theme of this. Right? Because Z J naught isn't this. Y is this. Their distance is, should be greater than equal to the theme of, right? Yeah. It's not in G, it's not in here. By contrapositive, if you're in here, then you're in here. So this gives the inclusion, right? So we can um, applying Cauchy on a disk, right? If we apply Cauchy on a disk, we have this and the rest follows. Right? So we have this. And this gives a corollary, which is that for any closed rectifier of a curve that homotopic to zero, then it's a winding number is equal to zero for all w not in the domain. So this is kind of right. So we have this curve, homotopic to zero. For any point w, right, it goes around w zero times. Right? So Here's the corollary. Because this home topic is zero, then its integral should be zero. Because um, the integral along any con constant path, I mean constant path, a constant path is uh, smooth. So if it's smooth, we can bring the derivatives in and the derivative of a constant function is zero. So the integral is zero, right? Because you're multiplying the, the just think about the u substitution thing, right? Because we're d with respect to gamma t, something like that. du, right? So it gives you zero if it's homotopic to zero. And the winding number is equal to this by definition, but as w is not in the domain, this is analytic. So this is zero, so the winding number is zero, right? This is a corollary, yeah? So for G is open, gamma one zero gamma one close rig fiber curve. If they're the same, then their winding number are the same. For any A not in a domain, right? Because you see, because there this is equal to right, this is equal to gamma one in terms of integral, right? So here's a kind of positive. If they have a different winding number, they are not homotopic. Okay. So if you go around, if you go around here, 
and you do the same thing and go around here, then you guys are not homotopic. Even though you guys look the same. But you guys are not the same because you're a different orientation, right? If you say it like that. Well, the winding number are different, so we have they're different. <laughs> so we let a new definition is that we've been talking about closed curve, right? If you just talk about this this curve, curve that's not necessarily closed, we still want some notion of homotopy, right? So this is called a fixed endpoint homotopic, FEP. Right, such that they have the same endpoint, then they're fixed endpoint homotopic if there exists a gamma such that. So this is as usual and this changes a bit. Right? This gives you A and at one it gives you B. Right. So it is also an equivalence relation. Okay, so it's kind of briefly explained. I want you to prove it, right? Like gamma st is, right, we just define it as gamma zero, yes, so we're good. I mean, as gamma s, right? And it is um, reflexive. If this is given, we define this, right? So uh, eventually, we're just doing the same thing as above, right? We're just doing the same thing, right? We're just, we're just doing the same thing as here, right? The only difference is that for for here, we have this, right? But for for this one, we just have this, right? So we do the same thing, right? So we have this. The continuity are the same. The proof of continuity are the same. So now we see that, oh, if you are too homotopic, I, I go back. Again, I get a closed curve, right? The closed curve. Now we let delta, I mean, we let de gamma be given such that this is true, right? Be a homotopy. And we define gamma by this. Right, so does it homotopic to zero? It's a closed curve, right? For two homotopic curve, right? I go here and we stay here and we go back. Does this curve homotopic to zero? Yes, why? So first look at this definition gamma. So from S from zero to one over three is along gamma naught, right? From here, we stop at B, we took a break, and we go back. And we go back. We took a break and we go back. So we define lambda by this. Okay, we define lambda by this. And for each T, we just look at the definition. Gamma is the restriction of gamma to the boundary of this square. So 0 to 0 to 1 minus t, t to 1. So it's this square. Right? Gamma is the restriction of, lambda is the restriction of gamma. It goes from here to here. And we have gamma s naught is equal to gamma s1 is equal to a. And gamma 0 is equal to gamma 1 t. Okay? And to show that gamma is continuous, right? From here we use the continuity of gamma. Uh, from here we use again the continuity of gamma. From here, because gamma one is continuous, right? So for all different um region, we can use the continuity that is already given. So we're happy, right? So the estimation of input is left as an exercise is is not that hard okay it's just some algebra work right so for when you're estimating something like this and this if you remember the proof of the product of convergent sequence convergent the the trick is the same right so because if and, and the proof of limit of product 
If we want to say A and B N converges to A B, I mean A B, right? So this, we have A and B N minus A B. We want to estimate this as an epsilon, right? From here, we can subtract A and B plus A and B minus A B, right? So here we have A N of B N minus B plus B A N minus A, right? Here we don't add convergence sequence and bounded, and this is finite, and these two goes to zero. Right, so the entire thing goes to zero. Right, so this is the crucial part. So in estimating these things, right, when st approach to s naught t naught, right, we just plus t s naught minus t s naught. Right, eventually we'll get to that point. Trust, right, and and we and it can be shown that uh, lambda is continuous. Okay, so. So we have gamma sum on top of zero. Happy. So we have this is equal to this plus this minus this. Right? This is our definition. Right? This plus this and this. Right? Right? And this constant curve. Right? So we have this. So they're the same. If you are fixed, if they are FEP homotopic. And we're in this section with a definition. It's called simply connected sets. If simply connected, if it is connected and any closed curve is homotopic to zero. So if G is star, A star convex, then this proposition shows that it's simply connected, right? And lastly, we're going to introduce a theorem, which is Cauchy's theorem, general version. It's not proven. It says that if it's simply connected, then it is integral zero for any closed variable curve in any other function. If you're on a simply connected domain, okay? So it pushes to the furthest generality. It is not proven, so it's just to let you guys know. Okay. So that's the end. Alright, see you guys.